Hello, and welcome to a series of videos on the model-driven CLI, which is being introduced in release 16.0.01. This video introduces a basic configuration workflow, using OSPF as an example. When we enter exclusive configuration mode and navigate to the OSPF branch, we see with the info command, that the OSPF configuration is empty. So let's add two interfaces in the backbone area, and we can use the info command to see the candidate configuration when we are done. Next we will check and modify some OSPF timer settings, where the defaults values can be seen using the info detail command. Notice that the units for these timers are in milliseconds. But since flexible input formats are supported, we can use seconds for some of the input values. We see with the info command that the timer values are automatically converted to the base unit, which is milliseconds. Next we will configure the overload on boot timer, and with info detail, we see that this is an unconfigured parameter. Indicated with the double hash sign in front. We will set this timer to 2 minutes, using the flexible unit's input. Lastly, we enable the OSPF admin state and the OSPF candidate configuration is ready for validation. We see however that the validation fails, indicating that the interface with the name node 2 does not exist. Using the show router interface command, we see that we should have used interface node 4 instead. So let's delete interface node 2 using the delete command. Then add the correct interface. Before we validate the command, let's compare the running configuration with the candidate configuration, using the compare command. Notice the plus sign in front of the newly added configuration parameters. The validation is now successful, since no errors are returned. Before we commit the candidate configuration, let's demonstrate how you can copy-paste configuration snippets. Multiple formats can be used for this such as, info, info full context output, but also compare output, as used in this example. So let's first discard all changes using the discard command. Then we can restore our OSPF changes by pasting them back. The activation of the configuration using the commit is also successful, since no errors are returned. And finally, we see that the operational OSPF neighbor state is full.
which means we are at the end of the workflow, and we can leave the configuration mode using the quit config command. This brings us to the end of this video. Please watch additional videos or read the documentation for more information on the model-driven CLI.